What's up team? Today we're talking about the right triangle altitude theorem. So let's say we have a situation like this where we have a right triangle, A, B, C. That's the whole thing here. And then we drop in an altitude. Remember, altitude is just like another word for height. A lot of times um, we drop them into triangles. It's perpendicular to the base or whatever uh, line is, side is horizontal to the, the ground, as it were, um, and it goes to the highest point. So that's what we have here at this segment AD. Notice what happens when we drop in this altitude AD. Um, our one big right triangle turns into three separate right triangles. We have the, the big one, we have this medium-sized one, DAB, and then we have the smaller one, ADC. So what I'm going to do down here is I, I drew out three right triangles. Uh, I just want to kind of take them, take each individual right triangle out and kind of remove it from the noise so we can work with them separately. So the big one here, um, the, 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 the key here is to, to write the right uh, letters in the right vertices here. So A is at where our right angle is, this point right here, that's right here. Uh, the long leg goes up to B, and the short leg goes to C. So that's how we would name our, our big right triangle. The medium-sized one, the right angle is at D. The long leg goes up to B, and the short leg goes to A. And the small one over here, the right angle again is at D. The short leg goes to C, and the long leg goes up to A. Okay. So the, again, these three triangles are just the three that are in there, but I've separated them and kind of twisted them around so they all look the same and we can work with them a little bit easier. Okay, well, we don't know anything about any of these angles other than the right angles. Uh, this angle here is a right angle. This angle here, CAB, is a right angle. The right angle here is being chopped uh, by another chunk here. So we can't really say a whole lot about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign an arbitrary angle measure to one of these angles in one of the triangles, and then we're just going to explore and see what we can see and, and notice any patterns here. So the angle that I'm going to talk about is, uh, let's, let's do CAD. Let's just assign this an arbitrary value of 20 degrees. We could have picked anything. Um, I just chose 20. It's easy to work with, um, and I, I think it'll help us see some patterns here. So if this is a 20 degree angle, and we know that uh, angle ADC is 90, that means the measure of angle C must be 70, because 20 plus 90 plus 70 is 180 degrees. So I'm going to take that information down to uh, this triangle here. Angle C here is 70. This angle here is 20 degrees. All right, all right. Let's look at our medium-sized triangle now. In this medium-sized triangle, we have a right angle that's 90 degrees, okay? And then up here, this angle DAB, I'm noticing that the entire thing, CAB, is 90 degrees. If we take away 20 from that, we have 70 left over. So now we have a similar situation, triangle sum theorem, 70 plus 90 is 160. Uh, subtract that from 180, and 20 is what remains. So in the medium-sized triangle, we have a 20-degree angle up here and a 70-degree angle down there. Okay, now the big triangle, the right angle is at A. Cool, we got that. Uh, angle C here is 70 degrees. Let's capture that information. And angle B is 20 degrees. We already, we already did the calculation. I just needed to record it. Okay, uh, I don't think I need to point this out to you, but I'm going to. Uh, when we check out our three separate triangles that, again, are inside this original figure, we have three similar triangles uh, by angle-angle. Um, they, they share all three angle measures. So they're the exact same shape. They're just different sizes. They're dilations of each other. That is always, always, always going to be the case. Every single time you have a right triangle with an altitude like this, it's going to create three right triangles the small, the medium, and then the large, the whole thing. And they're all going to be similar to each other, meaning they share three angles and they're going to be proportional to one another. Okay, so that is the right triangle altitude theorem. Let's do an example over here on this side. We have a big right triangle, JOS. Then we have this segment, OH, which acts as the altitude. It's the same thing that's going on. It's just rotated slightly differently, but we have this right angle here. So we have the small triangle, the medium triangle, and then the, the full triangle. So the first thing I would do when attacking a problem like this, I haven't even read what we're asked to do yet. 
but I'm confident we're going to need to utilize these three similar triangles. So I'm going to draw them out separately. Uh, I always I draw them different sizes on purpose so that I, I can keep it straight in my head what's going on here. The big one is JOS. This medium one is here. So the right angle is at H. The long side goes up to J and the short side goes over to O. The small triangle is OHS. H is the right angle. The long leg goes to O and the short leg goes over to S. Um, we know a few more things, so let's write them in. We know that JH has a length of 16. JH has a length of 16. And we know that OH has a length of 12. So that's right here. But interestingly enough, it's also right here. It's the long leg of the small triangle. So we're going to say this as well. And we don't know anything about the legs of the, uh, the big triangles yet. We know this is 16 plus something. We just don't know what HS is at this point in time. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Zip on Q. The first thing we're asked to find is HS. We're also going to find JO and OS in a bit here. So to find HS, uh, if we look at our figure, it's here. It, it feels a little funny. Like, ah, what do we do to find that chunk of the line? I don't know. But if we just look at these two triangles, we have, we have our set of three. We know that they're all similar because of the right triangle altitude theorem. Uh, we have some ratios that we can utilize. So we have some corresponding sides. Uh, JH corresponds to OH. 16 over 12 will create that ratio. And then the other side, we're going to have 12 over uh, HS. And we'll solve. So I'll do that up here. Uh, I'm doing, I'll spell it all out. JH over OH equals uh, HO over HS. This ratio must be true because they are similar triangles. Let's fill in the pieces. So we're going to have 16 over 12 equals 12 over HS. That's the chunk we don't know. Cross multiplying, we have 16 HSs equals 12 times 12, that's 144. Dividing both sides by 16 now. So in my calculator, I'm typing in 144 divided by 16. And I learned that HS has a length of 9. So I'm going to record that here. I'm going to record that here. And I'm going to record that here. Sweet. Let's move forward. J-O. That is this line here. It's this line here. It's the hypotenuse of the medium triangle. And it's also the long leg of the larger triangles. Well, I'm not able to do anything with this large triangle here. We just don't have enough information about it. We can't create ratios when we don't know any of the pieces. Um, oh, you know what? I take that back. We, we could approach this um, because we have JS which is just 16 plus 9, which is 25. So we do have that value. Um, it's still not enough to help us, I don't think, to find J-O. Yeah, so we'd have to match this hypotenuse to one of the other hypotenuses because uh, they're corresponding, and we just don't have any of the others. So what we're going to have to do is kind of kick it old school a little bit. We're just going to focus on this center one because we have two of the side legs. We'll use Pythagorean theorem, A squared, plus b squared equals c squared. So uh, I'm going to set that up as 12 squared plus 16 squared equals, well, I'm going to call it jo squared. I know it's 12 squared is 144. I don't remember what 16 squared is. It ends with a 6. I'm pretty confident. There we go. 256 equals jo squared. I'm going to find the sum here. 256 plus 144 is 400. Now we just need to find the square root of both sides, and we'll have uh, the square root of 400 is 20. So we have JO equal to 20. Boom. That means this length here is 20. That means this length here is 20. That means this length here is 20. Ooh, okay, we're making things happen now. OS is the last thing we're asked to find, uh, which makes sense. That is the short leg on the large triangle. It is the hypotenuse of the smallest of the triangles. So we're going to use uh, these two triangles here. Um, well, actually, you know what? We have choices. We could use 
uh, the small one and the medium one to kind of create some ratios. Compare like 20 to our unknown and then compare 12 to nine. Uh, we could totally do something like that. We could also do the medium one with the big one. Here's what I'm gonna do, here's my tip. Uh, I would compare the smaller one to the medium one in this case because the smaller one's got smaller numbers. So it's easier to work with. So look at your corresponding sides. Uh, we have plenty of choices we can make. We can create a ratio that's 16 over 12 of. Uh, uh, no, we wouldn't want to do that because then we'd have to do 12 over 9. It's true, but that doesn't help us. We want to make sure we use this hypotenuse. So I would do um, like 16 over 12 of equals 20 over x. I think that's the move. You could also do 12 over 9 equals 20 over x. That also works just fine. Um, okay, let's find a space to do this. I'm just going to tuck it in up here. So I'm going to do 16 over 12 equals 20 over x. Cross multiply 16x equals, well, 10 times 12 is 120, but I have 210, so this is going to end up being 240. Now 240 divided by 16, I don't know what that is. It looks like it's 15. And we are solving for OS, so this length here is 15, this length is 15, OS, this length is 15, and OS, our length is 15. And of course, you could check this if you wanted to confirm. You could do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, the whole thing. So 15 squared plus 20 squared is going to equal 25 squared. And there are all, all the other ones you're going to check out as well. This video is getting too long for me to show all of that. Key takeaways. When you have a right triangle that's being chopped by the altitude, you, it creates three right triangles. All of them are similar every single time, not just for this particular example. So when you run into a situation like this out in the wild, separate them. Draw the three separate triangles, three different sizes, then you can start to compare them and create ratios and solve for unknown parts. Okay, there it is, right triangle altitude theorem. Let's dive into some practice problems. Let me know if you have questions. You got this.